Hey there YouTube, welcome back to Wise Guys Garage. In today's video, we're heading back to the engine dyno. Now, if you haven't seen the previous videos on my brother's 08 Camry V6 with the manual transmission swap, go ahead and check those out first. But essentially, this entire video series is based on getting as much power as we can out of the stock system without doing any like crazy modifications to it, like adding cams or anything along those lines. Now, in previous videos, what we've tested so far is we've swapped out the air induction system or the air intake tube. We've also swapped the Y pipe. And the next thing that we wanted to test, which is in today's video, is if we were to disconnect the Y pipe from the rest of the exhaust system, will we make any more power? Is the Y pipe the actual restriction here? Now, in my personal opinion, it's a possibility. It's, you know, very well could be the actual system on the exhaust that's very restrictive and not allowing more power to be you know, generated. But we don't know. The only way we can really find out is heading to the dyno and testing that. One other thing I haven't mentioned in my previous videos that I've wanted to test is swapping out for the 2GR FXE intake plenum. This intake plenum is only found on hybrid versions of the 2GR engine series. And essentially, the only difference between the FXE and the FE intake if you were to actually look at them side by side and have a number two intake plenum and number two is referring to the style of the actual intake design number one was on the early avalons and like the sienna 07 to 11 camrys had the number two which i have right here and then the number three was in like the later siennas right after post 2011 and a couple other highlanders and whatnot but the fxe intake looks exactly like this without this guy on there. This is the ACIS system. Basically what this does is it changes the runner lengths with the flap that's contained inside of the intake. And for higher RPMs, it opens up and keeps it so it's a shorter runner length for optimal airflow and uh, volumetric efficiency. And then when it closes, it increases runner length for more torque production at a lower RPM. So essentially all the FXE intake is you know, compared to a number two intake, which we got right here, is basically taking this out of the equation completely. Other than that, they are cast pretty much identically. There's a small few differences between the two, like, you know, missing some vacuum ports on the back. There's just one big breather there. And then there's only this one right here on the bottom as well. And I believe this big breather was for the EGR tube. Not exactly sure, but, you know, other than that, they're pretty much the same intake plan. Now, if you wanted to, you could take this piece out right here with a razor blade, pull it out, cut it flat on the inside, uh, and then epoxy it back in. And effectively, you would have your own FXE intake. Just that simple. So let me not waste any more of you guys' time. Let's head to the dyno and see how much power we're making. Alrighty guys, so we made it back to the dyno. We've got the car with the Y pipe unbolted from the rest of the exhaust. Let's see if that's what the new restriction is. So if this happens to make the same horsepower amount, around 250 wheel, then we know we gotta address the Y pipe, if not the exhaust manifolds. So let's go and get this all set up and hit the dyno. Well, as you can see, we got the exact same numbers as we did prior to with the full exhaust system attached to the car. So the next thing we wanted to test was putting on the 2GR FXE intake manifold. So the first thing we did was pull off the FE intake manifold, as you can see right here. And we never actually test fitted it before we installed it on the dyno because we wanted to do the runs back to back. And unfortunately, that's when we found out that the map sensor located on top of the FXE manifold doesn't fit with the cowl in the way it is. So we just ripped the cowl off super quick. It doesn't take long at all. And we ran it on the dyno and see what numbers we get.
Alrighty guys, so we're back from the dyno. Let's discuss what we've learned today. So for starters, let's go over exactly what we ran on the dyno. The first run was with the FE intake, and every single run that we did today was with the rest of the exhaust completely disconnected. Unfortunately, it didn't seem that the rest of the exhaust is the actual restriction here on making more power with this car. It appears that it was more than adequate because the number did not change at all whatsoever between when we ran it with the full exhaust and then when we ran it without the full exhaust. Now, mind you, there was a 60 degree Fahrenheit temperature difference from when we got 252 wheel horsepower and 254 wheel horsepower. So keep that in mind. All right, so the next thing that we tested was swapping out the intake clamp. Like I said earlier, we went from a 2GR FE intake, like I got right here, and we put on a 2GR FXE intake, and a big dead giveaway is this yellow thing does not exist on a 2GR FXE intake. And it also has a map sensor, which is that little spot on the top you saw earlier. If you guys were to swap one of those in your car, uh, keep in mind it will not fit with the cowl in the way. It's gonna hit the cowl, so you might have to get like a block off plate or something on there. I didn't address that earlier in the video, but if you stayed along till the end, now you know. That saw some minimal increases in horsepower at the power we're making right now. It went from 254 to 259 mil horsepower, then to 258. And I'm not exactly sure if it's the intake manifold itself flowing more air to allow the engine to breathe better, or is it the fact that the actual intake plenum wasn't heat soaked? And that's the reason why the next run following after the 259 wheel horsepower, it went to 258 wheel horsepower. I'm a little bit on the toss up on that. I don't really believe that it was a huge improvement. I mean, it seems that it could be a possible gain just due to the fact that you don't have a huge chunk of plastic in there. It could definitely help on the top end when you're making more horsepower, but where we're at right now, it doesn't seem to be the case. So I think the next logical thing that we should do is do some more testing, obviously, so we can get further into that 300 wheel horsepower number I want to achieve. And the next thing I want to test is 93 octane. Now, I'm sure you guys are all familiar that the 2GR is rated at different horsepower numbers between whatever car it actually came in. Now, for example, the Lexus ES350 in 2007 was rated at 273 horsepower but the Toyota Camry in 2007 was only rated at 268 horsepower. The only difference between the two, every single part from top to bottom on both engines are completely identical, is the octane rating that they were rated at. So even in the advertising numbers, there is a horsepower difference between the two. I don't think anybody's went to the dyno and actually tested between 87 and 93. What I wanna see is, is they're a significant increase and it's a lot more than what they actually advertised and at the end of the day if it happens to be a huge increase if you guys are looking to maximize power potential from your car that's probably one of if not the easiest thing we can do here so to wrap things up guys that's pretty much going to end it right here i really appreciate you all tuning in thank you so much for watching make sure you comment and like and subscribe because it really helps the channel grow and for everybody who's been reaching out, asking questions about what's the status update on the car, well, it's finally here. Hopefully, since I don't have anything coming up on my schedule the next upcoming weeks, like holidays and things along those lines, I'm able to get out the next video on this car a lot quicker, and there might be some surprises in there. So stay tuned, and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care.